In the uproarious and surprisingly heartfelt comedy No Hard Feelings, we follow the chaotic journey of Maddie, a woman on the brink of losing everything, who takes on an unconventional job to boost the confidence of an awkward teenager named Percy. What begins as a desperate attempt to secure fast cash quickly spirals into a series of wild, unpredictable events. As Maddie and Percy navigate this unusual arrangement, they find themselves in situations that challenge their perceptions of love, relationships, and the true meaning of growing up. This film is a roller coaster ride of humor and emotion, leaving both characters and the audience forever changed. The movie starts with Gary, a tow truck driver, arriving at Maddie Barker's home to repossess her car. Maddie, who had a past romantic relationship with Gary until she suddenly cut off contact, tries to appeal to his emotions. However, her efforts are interrupted by a man from a casual encounter the previous night who appears in his underwear and makes inappropriate advances despite her protests. Gary tows the car away. As Maddie is an Uber driver, she puts on rollerblades to catch up with Gary, halting when he stops to buy breakfast. She tries to lower the car and drive off, but the vehicle remains attached to the truck. In a clumsy attempt, she tries to disengage the car only for Gary to raise it back up again. Maddie faces probation due to her previous actions and receives a notice about a large amount of back taxes owed, which puts her house in Montauk at risk. Montauk is where she has lived her entire life. In addition to being a tow truck driver, Maddie works as a bartender by the water, collaborating with her friend Sarah and spending time with Sarah and her husband Jim. Maddie's boss comments on her aggressive attitude after she argues with a customer who tries to order a drink before the bar's official opening. During their break, Sarah shows Maddie a job listing from a wealthy family looking for someone to be a companion for their son before he goes to college. In return, they offer a Buick Regal as payment. Maddie understands that companion implies a relationship, but she agrees to it because she has no other options. She also sees an opportunity to take advantage of the wealthy family, whom she blames for the potential loss of her home. Maddie arrives at the Becker family's residence and meets the parents, Laird and Allison. They discuss their son Percy, who is socially awkward and introverted, spending most of his time playing video games. Although initially seeking someone closer to Percy's age, Maddie convinces them that she is the right fit for the job. However, Laird and Allison emphasize that Percy must not know about their arrangement. They direct Maddie to find Percy at the dog shelter where he works. Wearing a fitted dress, Maddie tries to charm him, pretending to be interested in adopting a dog. Percy introduces her to Milo, a former police dog with a history of cocaine addiction. Percy feels uneasy due to Maddie's assertiveness, leading him to contemplate leaving early. However, Maddie suggests driving him home in Jim's van. Upon reaching her house, Percy reacts by spraying mace at her, which causes her discomfort. Maddie then explains that she was attracted to him, prompting Percy to request a real date. Maddie accepts his proposal. Afterward, Maddie returns Jim's van and describes Percy as unattractive when recounting the events to Jim and Sarah. Maddie then takes Percy to a bar where she knows someone on the wait staff and orders a Long Island iced tea for him, even though he doesn't enjoy the drink. Another person, Travis, arrives, revealing that he once had a romantic relationship with Maddie. Showing his wedding ring, he claims that Maddie ending their relationship was a good thing and warns Percy not to get too attached to her. Later, Maddie joins Percy at the shoreline for a session of skinny dipping. Although Percy hesitates, Maddie persuades him to join in. Shortly after, three intoxicated teenagers arrive and make off with their clothes, which contain their wallets, cell phones, and keys. As a result, Maddie emerges from the water completely naked and confronts the teenagers to recover their belongings. After a struggle, she successfully retrieves their possessions. After returning to the water, Percy comments on Maddie's behavior, suggesting that something is wrong. This makes Maddie consider leaving, but Percy, still unclothed, insists on getting his phone back. In response, he climbs onto the hood of Maddie's car. Unfazed, Maddie speeds up leading to a daring ride with Percy hanging onto the hood. The police spot them and begin a pursuit. Worry about the impact on her driver's license, Maddie accelerates and skillfully crosses a railroad track just ahead of an oncoming train, causing the police to lose sight of them. In a renewed attempt to attract Percy, Maddie brings him to her home, where she tries to seduce him with a provocative dance, encouraging him to join in. However, her plans change when she spots a rash on his back, which she attributes to his anxiety. He starts to open up about his past, sharing how his friends teased him for sleeping in his parents' bedroom and fabricating stories about having sex with them, leading to his reluctance to socialize. As Maddie applies lotion to his back, she shares an awkward memory of her own with Percy. Maddie is visited by her former classmate Do Khan, now a realtor, who expresses interest in selling her house at its full value. 
Maddie declines his offer, determined to keep trying to save the house. Percy then invites Maddie on a real date, which she gladly accepts. They have a fun time at an arcade, winning prizes until they are asked to leave after Maddie playfully teases another child. They later visit the lighthouse, where Percy works up the nerve to ask Maddie for a kiss. Despite his slight awkwardness, Maddie agrees and they share the moment together. During their conversation, Maddie confides that she has never left Montauk and has continued living in her family home with her mother. She explains that her father provided them with the house and some money to ensure they wouldn't interfere with his new family. Later, they visit Jody, Percy's former male nanny. Jody senses something unusual about Maddie, but she playfully teases him about the oddity of a grown man working as a nanny for a teenage boy. Later on, Maddie and Percy go to an upscale restaurant, creating their own version of a prom date to make up for missing their respective proms and they discover Percy's talent for playing the piano. During their conversation, Maddie encourages Percy to showcase his talent. With newfound confidence, he takes the stage and performs the song Main Eater. The entire restaurant becomes their audience and his performance draws cheers and applause. Maddie, equally surprised, finds herself impressed. A fellow student named Natoli approaches Percy, complimenting his performance and sharing that she plans to attend Princeton in the fall. Natalie invites Percy to a gathering for future Princeton students. In response, Maddie tries to dissuade him from attending, expressing concerns that he might become romantically involved with Natalie or another young woman. Despite Maddie's concerns, Percy insists on attending the event. He arrives at the party in a limousine and Maddie soon follows, searching for him among a crowd of pretentious teenagers who view her presence as out of place due to her age. After a determined search, Maddie finds Percy in a compromising position next to Natalie. However, Percy is in poor condition, having become sick from drinking alcohol and taking ibuprofen. Maddie quickly steps in to help him by inducing vomiting. Their efforts are abruptly interrupted when the host's parents arrive and in an attempt to protect Maddie, ask her to leave. After they leave the party, Percy accidentally punches Maddie in the throat. Despite this, Percy declares that he is ready to have sex with Maddie in the limo. However, when he confesses his love for her, Maddie realizes he is too intoxicated and decides not to go through with it. Later, Laird and Allison notice Percy's newfound enthusiasm and sociability, which he attributes to his recent romantic relationship. However, Percy confides in them that he has changed his plans and decided not to attend Princeton, choosing instead to stay close to Maddie. Concerned, Allison calls Maddie, who is now grappling with doubts about her commitment to the job. Laird reassures Maddie that she can keep the car without needing to continue the relationship, hoping this will prevent Percy from abandoning his plans to attend Princeton. Unfortunately, Percy, sitting in his parents' vehicle, accidentally activates the audio system and unintentionally overhears their conversation. During this unintended eavesdropping, he hears Maddie's intention to keep the car without pursuing an intimate relationship, leaving him deeply hurt and saddened. Percy invites Maddie over for lunch to meet his parents, but during the meal, he begins to drink their wine and adopts a passive-aggressive attitude. Later, he teams up with his friend Crispin to execute a plan involving the Buick. They drive the car into the woods, where they tamper with it by placing a rock on the gas pedal, causing the vehicle to crash into a tree. The impact results in the tree collapsing onto the car. In an attempt to get things over with, Percy and Maddie decide to have sex when they return to the house. However, before he can even fully engage, Percy prematurely ejaculates on her thigh. Frustrated, he claims that he is now enlightened and no longer wishes to see Maddie, predicting that she will end up spending the rest of her life in Montauk. Later on, Gary delivers the battered Buick to Maddie, as her name is listed on the paperwork. As a result, she is forced to continue her Uber duties using the now-damaged vehicle. While Percy isolates himself in his room, absorbed in video games and ignoring Maddie's texts and calls, Maddie eventually gathers enough money to repair her car and pay off her taxes. She joins Jim and Sarah in a celebratory moment, but their joy is short-lived when Jim and Sarah announce their plans to move to Florida due to their upcoming baby's arrival. Overwhelmed with disappointment, Maddie realizes she is facing a future of solitude. Accepting this, she contacts Doe and decides to take him up on his offer to help sell her house. Maddie transfers ownership to Jim and Sarah so they can have a home to raise their child, while she begins preparing for her own move to California. Upon learning that Percy is attending a Princeton gathering, Maddie decides to find him. However, Percy continues to ignore her, refusing to respond as she tries to explain her side of the story. In a twist of their earlier encounter, Maddie climbs onto the hood of his car, but Percy drives off with her holding on. Their unexpected journey takes them along the shoreline, where Maddie accidentally catches fire from a nearby barbecue grill. The chaotic escapade ends with Percy driving the car into the water, bringing their tumultuous ride to a dramatic conclusion. 
Overwhelmed by panic, Percy desperately searches for Maddie until they both exchange tearful apologies. Following their emotional reconciliation, Maddie reveals her plan to move to California, a decision Percy fully supports. He reassures her that despite everything, he views their intimate experience as a meaningful milestone in his life. On the day of his departure to Princeton, Percy packs his bags and says goodbye to Laird and Allison. To his surprise, Maddie shows up, ready to drive him to his destination before beginning her own journey to California. As a final surprise, Maddie introduces Milo, a new addition to her life, leaving Percy astonished. The film concludes on this heartwarming note. Thank you for watching.